In this month of the Holy Spirit, our teaching series all through the week before we look at Open Doors is understanding the blessedness of a revival. Understanding what? The blessedness of a revival. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I decree there shall be a revival in your life. Maybe your spiritual life is dry. Everything is dry. There shall be a revival. In Winner's Chapel, I can buy there shall be a revival. That is why the, the, the week of emphasis declared, don't miss it. It's going to be three days of revival fire. What do I call it? Three days of revival fire. Joel chapter 2. If you read it from verse 21 to verse 29, you will see the, a revival there. Joel chapter 2 from verse 21 down to verse 29. He said, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do what? Tell somebody great things. Can you see what this month is loaded with? Tell somebody great things. So what you have never seen in your life, God will do it for you this month. What they say you cannot get, God will give it to you this month. Where they say you cannot go, God will take you there this month. Fear not, O Lord, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the feet. For the pastor of the wilderness do spring for the tree, bearing her fruit and the fig tree and the vine, be ye their strength. Verse 23. Be glad, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain in the first month. Verse 24. And the floor shall be full of weeds, and the fire shall overflow with wine and oil. Tell somebody supernatural abundance. Abundance this month. Are you catching it at all? I'm only trying to paint a picture of where God has brought us to. Supernatural abundance. Pastor, what about now that everything is poured in my life? He quickly added verse 25. I will restore. I will restore to you the year that the locusts are eating. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And what happened in verse 26? And you shall eat in plenty. Supernatural abundance. When there is a revival, there is abundance. And you shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied, not, not halfway. And praise the name of the Lord thy God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Can you see? When glory comes, shame is terminated. Shame shall be terminated in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are looking at a revival here. Understanding the blessedness. The, the, the benefit of a revival. If we say the outpouring of the Holy Ghost is actually what culminates in revival. What are the blessings? Please take note of this very quickly. That what we call a revival is actually the move of the spirit of God in the midst of his people. Tell somebody the move of the spirit. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. The move of the spirit. <laughs> Lord, give us understanding. With all meekness, there are many things we call a revival. It's not a revival. It's not. I got saved in the wave of a revival. The revival of the late Archbishop Bensey in the Hossas of the 1970s and the 80s. Lekuta Pashikara. Lord, visit us again with that order of revival. All oh, this one, government is just things are happening. Nobody is talking. There is no revival. There is no revival. Sir. A revival is a move of the Holy Spirit that make men restless. Not quiet. That they burn one church, the whole church is sleeping. Don't report me, but I, listen, I need to tell you the truth. A revival makes Christians radical. A revival makes Christians unstoppable, untouchable, unmolestable. A revival is a, is, a, is a move of the spirit that make all the powers of unbeliever comes under. We are talking about a, a, the, the move of the Holy Ghost. It's a revival. 
Nishu Katapalia. Yes, in a revival, it is evident that multitude are drafted to the church. We saw that in Acts of the Apostles, chapter, chapter, chapter 2. Because the first revival in scripture in the New Testament started in Acts of the Apostles. It was a revival that gave birth to the, what you call the church. Do you know that it was a revival that changed the order of worship from Saturday to Sunday? It was a revival. And we saw Peter preach one message. 3,000 souls gave their life to Christ one time. About 3,000. That's a revival. We saw a fearful Peter. Hello? In Matthew 27, fearful Peter that could not even stand to defend his master. When there was a revival, the same Peter confronted the same people that killed his master and said, you are the one that crucified Jesus. He's the Lord of glory face to face. What happened to the fear? Revival killed it. The same Peter who couldn't talk before a checker dancer. The guy said, look at you. He said, he blessed you. I see you. You they follow that man when they call Jesus, when they kill. He said, I swear to God. <laughs> Not be me, you see. Maybe the person look like me. The Bible says, Peter began to curse. But I don't know. I've never seen him before. Amen? One and a half months later, when there was a revival, the same Peter stood before the Pharisee, before the Sanhedrin, before the doctors of the law, and said, Jesus is the Lord of glory, whom you crucified. And they couldn't do him anything. In fact, they were so afraid of them. They said, ah, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 16, they said, ah, Acts of the chapter 4, from verse 13, he said, ah, where has this man this boldness? These mighty things that they are doing from verse 13. And they took knowledge of them that they have been with Jesus. Tell somebody, something just happened. A revival moves people forward. It changes, it changes everything about a man. This one that you are qualified for a job, they collect it from you. Give it to a devil, call an unbeliever. There is no revival. If there is a revival, the unbeliever will not wake up. They will call you back, hey, Joe, come and take your thing. The person where we give her to no wake up. Neguta Shalaba. I decree that order of revival this month. It is, it is a dramatic move of the spirit that does not permit you to be at the same spot. It moves people forward. Amen? Sir, we need to pray for a revival. Sir, we need to pray for what? A revival. A revival. In the midst of a revival, the sick person just enter church and get healed. Nobody prays. You know why? Revival is not about a person. It is the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? It is the Holy Ghost at work. And when the Holy Ghost is at work, whether there is a person or not, it will still manifest his power. It will still manifest his power. It is the raw demonstration of the power of God. It is the raw demonstration of the spirit of God at work. When we read said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, and because of that, I will be able to preach without fear. Isn't it? From verse 1, Isaiah chapter 61, there will be no sorrow. Everything negative is replaced. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to do what? Preach good tidings unto the meek. Mm. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the captive, uh, liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of what? Vengeance for God. A revival season 
is a season where the spirit of God overrides the emotion and the strength of men. That is why a man who used to be fearful suddenly become bold. What happened? The Holy Ghost overshadowed his weakness of sheepishy and overshadowed it with a lion heart. That's a revival. In 1990, 1995, there about 95, between 95 and 96, just shortly before the late Archbishop Bessie, that was a day. Look at what happened. There was challenge in the eastern Nigeria, especially around the Imo states and Abia states. And they were all manner of, uh, <clears throat> you know, those rituals, that was when they actually started. All these ritual killing and that, they, they started publicly in Nigeria in 1992-93. They were not there before. Just, just lately. After the revival. And then, somehow, somehow, the, the youths, there was a great riot in Imo State. You remember in the days of a, what they call it, Otukutuku or something like that. That's notorious ritualist and all those stuff. Uh -huh. I think I've forgotten his name. I actually saw him one on one when I went to South in prison anyway. Praise the Lord. And then, by reason of the anger of the youth, listen to a revival. By reason of the anger of the youth, they destroy a lot of things. And somehow, somehow, one of, our, one of the churches, the Pentecostal churches, was attacked. They said this part, the pastor was in this right. The pastor escaped by reason of um, just escaped death from those youths. They burnt down the church. Now listen, when the church was burnt down, and then it was discovered that um, that church, that it was not a rich church, it was a normal church. There was just a misunderstanding. Why? Those who were ritualists actually attended the service and gave their life to Christ and dropped their materials. So they mistook these materials for the church materials. And then they burned the church. Listen to this. A revival. The Archbishop Benson in the house and went to the federal government that they must build back the church. And the government promised to build it back. What are we having now? How many churches have been burned? Give me that old time religion. Old time religion. Old time religion is good. You remember his story also. We are talking about a revival here, sir. Where the witches of the whole world said they want to have meetings. I'm sure you have, you have watched it plenty of time. Where? In Benin. One man said it can't happen. Tell somebody a revival. Hey! Where are the in those house of this day? The killings in Nigeria is just too much. That we are too quiet. Lake Church, Wednesday, don't miss service. We are going to be taking it raw to the devil in prayers. Things must change. That's a revival. <laughs> he said they cannot meet. If it is nowadays, I'm not sure any pastor will talk. Oh, God, help me. I don't want to say something that I will, I will be sacked. Or I will be arrested. It was Panampasin Paul that sang a song. We have missed it. He said, why? He said, every one of us are chasing our own denomination. We don't care about other Christians anymore. If a Catholic priest is killed, let the whole church in Nigeria protest to the federal government. No, even if it's peaceful protest. Let us march to Asu Rock. Our leaders leading us. All of them in front. That is redeemed. That is winner. That is Christ embassy. That is Baptist. That is this. For one reverend father and see if the killings will not stop. We need a revival. Sir, we need, I'm speaking passionately from the depth of my heart, what, I, what is burning me. We are asleep. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14, awake thou that sleepest. We are asleep. We need a revival. 
A revival is not just the gathering of people into a church. It's the gathering of God inside the heart of men. Do you know that God reacts when you touch his child? If we are the body of Christ, why can't we react? So it is not out of place. That is why verse 3 said, to proclaim the day of vengeance. We decree vengeance. I just pray. My prayer, my prayer, sincere prayer, is that the church will wake up before 2023. Otherwise, we will still make the same mistake we made before. Can, can you imagine that the exchange rate moved from 150 to almost 650 in four years? And then, listen to me. <clears throat> listen to me. You are complaining that even the Ebola, what is Ebola they call it? Ebola that you produce in your farm to buy one, check it out one that they have roasted, you pay 300 or 400. And you are saying, eh, is it not farm here? They pluck it. The problem is not the farm where they pluck it. The problem is not who farm it. The problem is the inflation rate. That is, that is what determines prices. And we all made that mistake. Give me that old time religion. We need a revival. Archbishop say they can't hold the meeting. A revival, sir. A revival, sir. You remember the revival in uh, Second Kings, is it chapter one, where they sent fifty men to arrest. Elijah, he said, if I be, tell somebody a revival. A revival is a season where God shows forth his power. If I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume thee and thy fifty. What happened? The Bible said the fire of the Lord came. God did evil pity. Because in the revival, God does not pity and clear 15 men straight away. One man challenged, is it 900 and something which is one man? He put his life on the line. That's a revival. Can I tell you something? The truth of the matter is that a revival is actually called a revival fire. Because if there is no fire dimension, it is not a revival. It is actually called revival fire. With this generation, we have removed the fire. No wonder we are in ice block. It's not, there's nothing like, it's not just a revival. It's a revival fire. It's what a revival. Now, let me, sh let me show you. And we'll, we'll, oh, time will run up. Don't worry, the second service continue. Let me show you. The revival of the new church in the New Testament started in what? Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2. Let's read it and see what we are talking about there. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Let's take it from verse 1. We'll be down to verse 4 quickly. Still to give us that scripture. We are rounding up. And when the day of Pentecost was what? Fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3. One, two, go church. Let's do it together. And there appeared unto them what? Cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. Which means without fire, there is no revival. Revival is actually the birth of fire in the church, in the life of the believer. Fire burning. Passion. Uncommon zeal. That's what makes them radicals. Verse 1 said they were filled. All of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, you see, there was a fire and they were filled. So it's not just a revival, it's actually called revival fire. If there is no fire, there is no revival. That is why one of the proof and signs of a revival is passion for God. Deadly passion that makes you willing to do anything for God without considering your life. Without considering your life. That's a revival. with fire a burning desire for God 
a longing for God. Amen. May the Lord give us understanding. Amen. Sir, we need that fire to fall. We need it to fall. I hope you know if the fire does not fall, the power cannot be manifested. Amen. Amen. What happened to believers in a revival? There is supernatural transformation. When there is a revival, oh, this one, I'm having a headache today, I am sick tomorrow, I am doing this one, use wisdom, it doesn't come. Everything changes. Are you hearing me? One of the blessedness of a revival is that the believer is unstoppable. Is what? Unstoppable. unstoppable. Anything you want to do, you'll get it. Yeah, yeah. You are talking about you are due for promotion. They want demons. Eh? As long as I am here, you will not be promoted. You will die. Yes, sir. It's a revival. Did you see that all the revival, revival, and death, death, death? What does it? No, don't, don't allow my enemy to die. You are an ice block, freezer. That's why you are saying so. When, you, when there is a revival, something is burning inside you. You don't care who is on the way. You bulldoze him out of the way. One of the blessings of revival is that when that power comes upon you, affliction can't stay. Sickness can't stay. That's why I used to ask questions. And then one which enter your house, past city room, past veranda, past kitchen, enter your bedroom, come press you down. Are you alive? Hey, ga 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 ga. Can I show you your identity quickly? Let me round up. Time is fast, pen. Can I show you your identity in the revival? Obadiah 18. You know, Obadiah 17, we know it. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be what? Deliverance and holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Now, church, let's read Obadiah verse 18 together. One, two, go. And the house of Jacob shall be what? And the house of Joseph, what? A flame. And the house of Esau for what? Istanbul. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Look at this scripture here. This scripture clearly defines two sets of people. The fire people and the wood people. When there is a revival, the fire people will consume the wood people. He said he will consume Esau. Not that they will stand on your way. You will consume them. He said, because God has spoken it. They will devour them. That there will be nothing left. That is why I say you are unstoppable. Yes, why fire is burning? What stops it? Stone or water? He just, when you see a really fire, nothing stops it. When you are in the south-south, go to some part of the north of Middle Bay. During dry season, when you see fire on mountain burning, sir, for weeks, unstoppable. Until the whole mountain is beer. Fire, sir. I release that fire upon you now. Amen. Whatever entered this service with you, I command that fire consume them now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. How this? My leg is paining me today. Oh, it moved to my eye. As I was sleeping, it moved to my finger. Ah, ah, ah. Hey, you move, you move. You move. Have you ever seen Satan? Lion. They say he's the strongest animal. Eh? But because he's very strong, he enters fire. Fire na fire. What am I checking? Fire. Biggest lion go fear. Yes, sir. Likotaba. Receive that fire now. Whatever represents the hand of the wicked upon your life, I command this fire to consume them. We need a revival. And I see that revival coming. Can I tell you the truth? What is happening in the nation shows that we need a revival. So when we are growing up in those days, when we hear these things in Afghanistan, in Iraq, we say, ah, it can never happen in Nigeria. It's not in our doorsteps. 
But we are saying it that time because we were hiding behind the revival pastors. In those days, we didn't know that there was a season of revival. Sando Shiketarayaba. That revival must return. That revival must return. It's a season of revival. I pray for you today. Please, if there's anything you should desire this month, it's a revival fire. What you should, should you desire? What should you desire? Just the fire. Just the fire. Just the fire. In the order of Elijah. In the second service, I'm going to be showing you the mystery between fire and ice block from scripture. A revival time and a non-revival time. And what happened? You will see that that's exactly what is happening now. Praise God. Don't worry, we'll finish the story of Archbishop and other ones from that side because of time. Amen? You are blessed. Today is our covenant day of open door. And I decree every door, Neroshi Kapayaga, close against you. I command that door open. Yeah. We are talking about door here. We are talking about hindrances. Barriers. A door in the realm of the spirit simply means denied access. <laughs> denied access. You know, for those of us who are in the in computer age, you want to log into some app or some information, they just tell you access what? Denied. Denied. That's a closed door. You punch a gate, bang, 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 boom, denied. Or you say decline, or anyone, depending on the language. It means unable to enter. Every time the word door is introduced, it means barrier. It simply means you cannot have free access. Is somebody with me? Follow me carefully. We're going to round up. Don't worry. So, we are saying covenant day of open door. What are we saying, therefore? We are simply saying the barrier removed. The hindrance removed. It means when I punch that my keys of what I used to do before and you say access denied, when I punch it this time, what am I to see? Approved. And I say approved, it opens up for what I'm looking for. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Good. Therefore, the covenant day of open door is to remove barriers from your life for you to assess what God has given to you. It is the remover of barriers. Remover of hindrances. Things that makes it impossible for you to possess what is yours. You know what Jesus Christ called himself? If you read the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 to verse 8, Jesus Christ said to me, he introduced himself to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Right. This thing said, he that is holy, he that is true. Now, I'd like you to underline that word, whether it's in your Bible or your PC. He that had what? The key of David. Underline the word what? The key of David. He that what? Open it. Listen, he said the key first before the opening. He that had the key of David, he that opened it, and no man shut it. And when I shut, no man can open. Now, what are we talking about here? For every barrier, we need a key. Every door requires what? A key. 
true of us. Even the doors, you think they don't have keys, they have keys. Anything, once it is a door, there must be a key. Otherwise, it is not a door. It cannot be assessed. It must have what? A key. And that the one studio is showing us, uh, thank you, one studio is showing us a mental object or a code. Like what you have to your ATM. I can't have access to your ATM. You know why? It has a key. And the key is called a code. Four pins. Or a detector. Whether it's a paper, whether it's by, by shadow, by all means, any, some of the hotels, five-star hotel, that you, just want, you just get there. And then the door open. Can I tell you what opened them? Your shadow opened them. It has been programmed that if you see a shadow, whether you see it or not, open. So, as you are coming like this, and you want to say, hey, hey. <laughs> Who opened the door? <laughs> Amen? Whether there is somebody there or not, there are packs of key that made the door open. Listen to this, therefore, if there is anything you want to get in your life and you are denied, that is a closed door. Maybe you are trusting God for finances. Everything you do fail. It means the door of finance is closed. You start business, it closes. The door of business is closed. There can be door to cities. When that door is closed against you, you can be inside the city you are struggling. While others are succeeding, everything you do fail. It's because perhaps the door of the city is closed. Even though you look as if you are inside, in the realm of the spirit, you are outside. Your door of marriage can be closed. That is why nobody says, how are you? It means that door is closed. What I will say, there is a barrier. But listen to me. To every barrier, I want to understand one thing. All doors are openable. So there is nothing called impossible as far as it's a door. The only reason why you think it's impossible is because you don't have the right key. Just want the right key. The right key. So in this service, let's look at one of the keys of open door very quickly to help us. The key of salvation. Amen. Can you see that now? There are doors that can never open until you are saved. Until you give your life to Christ and then you just see that things begin to work. There are doors, some of you, doors of marriage can never be opened until you use the key of born again. Rededicate your life. That thing called barrier, a door, is waiting for the right key. You have used makeup key. I hope you know that makeup is a key that catches foolish men. <laughs> Amen. It's, stup it's, it's stupidity that make you to look at a woman in church. Say, this one is beautiful. You never see her for a household. Now pancake make her like that. Oh. So, if that key open that door for you, it can only open door for foolish men. But serious minded, born again, talk talking men, the key that open their door is that you too must be born again and serious with God. There are doors that will never open until you are saved. There are sal salvation, whether you like it or not, is a major key that opens door to men. Jesus said to Nicodemus, John chapter 3, from verse 1 to verse 8, you must, it is a maybe, you must, verse 7. You is a matter of must because the door will not be open until you have that key of salvation. We are not talking about church attendance, salvation. Marvel not that I said unto you that what? Ye must, tell somebody must, be born again. It's a key. And when that door of demonic attack causes in your life, Seize that key, they open up. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, and verse 29 says so. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cause is every man that hung upon a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us who are 
Gentile. So when I am born again, the door of blessing is open. So if you are not born again, the door cannot be open. So if you want things to change in your life, if you want that barrier to be removed, you must. I'm saying what Jesus said to Nicodemus. He must be rise to your feet. That's very important. We we'll premise that we we'll show you the next key and other keys in the second service and in the third service. But the question is this: If you truly want things to change for you, let me speak directly now. Stop pretending. Be a child of God. Stop pretending. Stop hiding under church. Stop hiding under anything. Are you saved? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? Are you sure if the trumpet sounds now, you can rapture? You will go to heaven? By the way, are you not tired of the causes of your family? Only salvation can open it. Because by salvation, you are plugged into Abraham. And by that, the causes loses his hope. For whosoever cursed thee, I will curse. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. So quickly in this service, before we begin to pray and say, Lord, open doors, are you born again? The life you are living now is it the life of Christ. You need to be saved. You need to surrender your life to him. Thank you, Jesus. You need to say, Lord, today I surrender. I repent of my sin. Maybe, hear this, maybe you were once a Christian, you backslidden. Why not? Another opportunity is given to you. God is a God of second chance. He's saying, I still love you. It doesn't matter what you have done. Do you know that God still loves you? Surrender your life to him. Just say, yes, Lord, I agree. Just surrender to him and you see things turn around for you. This key is powerful because it brings the hand of God upon a man and then things begin to work for you. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. You want to say yes to Jesus. You want to truly give your life to him. You want to rededicate your life or you want to give your life back to him. Say, I want to stop my bad life. Put your right hand in your chest. Put your right hand on your chest. Wherever you are standing, pray this prayer with me. Put your right hand, place your right hand on your chest. Pray. Say, Jesus, I come to you today. I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. From this moment, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my personal savior. I repent of my sins to serve you because you died for me on the cross. The third day you rose again to justify me. Thank you for saving me today and for accepting me as your child. I'm grateful, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.